We have all heard the term woke, but what does it mean to be woke? Where does this come from and how does it work? It's common for groups of people to believe they're the only ones who possess the ability to see reality as it truly is. It is no different with the woke. To be woke is to be born again, to see the world anew and feel a need to awaken others to the truth. The phenomenon of wokeness has its origins both in Marxism and even more so in postmodernism. Marxists thought people had a false consciousness, which meant they couldn't see how terrible capitalism was and how it was keeping them down. Their consciousness needed to be raised, so that they could see the truth as the Marxists saw it. But then in the 1960s, postmodernism arose. This theory brought to light a new reality. The postmodernists saw Marxism as just another fabricated narrative. That is, a false and simplistic way of seeing the world, made up by the powerful. To these French postmodern philosophers like Foucault, Derrida and Lyotard, everything we think we know is actually a construct of power. They believed all knowledge was created and corrupted by power. Powerful forces in society decided what was and wasn't true. Then the way people spoke to each other in their everyday lives upheld the knowledge that propped up those in control. The postmodernists called this way of talking about things dominant discourses and believed these discourses only helped those at the top. Of course discourses do change. For example, when Christianity was a dominant discourse in society, then a gay man was considered a depraved sinner. Later, under emerging science around sex, it was believed he was suffering from a mental disorder. And when liberalism became dominant, he was a perfectly normal human being who happened to be romantically and sexually attracted to the same sex. Most of us would consider this progress. However, postmodernists were skeptical of all truth claims and disbelieved in progress. For them, everything we knew was based on stories created by those in power and nothing could be trusted. Everything we thought we knew was suspicious and likely produced by dominant discourses to serve the powerful. Nothing was as it seemed. We were all lost in a folk created by these discourses and unable to obtain any objective knowledge about the way the world really worked. Postmodernists assured us that at least they could see through the fog and deconstruct this knowledge to reveal its flaws to the rest of us. Postmodernism is messy by nature, but we can draw two key principles from it that have remained consistent. Firstly, a postmodern knowledge principle. Obtaining objective knowledge is impossible, and everything we think of as true is actually a social construct. This means truth is manufactured to fit the needs of those in charge. Intertwined with this is the postmodern political principle. Society is set up such that invisible and oppressive power systems work through all of us. We are all partially to blame for any negative outcomes in society. These power systems produce knowledge, and that knowledge is then used to keep the powerful in place. The original postmodernism died out in the 1980s, but its key ideas were taken further by the next wave of scholars in the 1990s. These scholars created fields like post-colonial studies, queer theory, critical race theory, and intersectional feminism. They weren't happy to stand in the fog and deconstruct things. They wanted to take action and change society. They used terms like imperialism, cis-heteronormativity, patriarchy, and white supremacy to describe what they saw as the dominant discourses in society. They used the term critical consciousness to describe the ability to see these systems of oppressive power with the goal of revolutionizing them. Someone with critical consciousness could see the imperialism, white supremacy and patriarchy in society and reveal this to the rest of us through their scholarship. Over the next 20 years, these theories developed and became more solid and concrete. They became absolute truths that were the basis for a new reformation of thought the theories seeped out of universities and entered popular culture. Students became activists, social media allowed the spread of these ideas, and popular books like White Fragility and How to Be an Anti-Racist made them accessible to everyone. Those who adopted this new vision of the world left behind the scepticism of postmodernism. They were now enlightened, awakened to the truth filled with certainty about the way all of society, all systems, and all interactions really worked. They could see it all. They were woke. The way that white person complimented her black colleague on good work? That wasn't just praise. 
It was white supremacist surprise at a black person having intelligence and capability. The way that man is sitting, with his knees pointing outwards? This has nothing to do with the shape of men's hips and their external testes. That's patriarchal entitlement to take up more space than women and crowd them out of public areas. What about the speaker who began with, Ladies and gentlemen, that's not a simple formal customary address. It's the erasure of non-binary people and an oppressive discourse that forces binary concepts of sex and gender onto everyone, making the world hostile to trans people and increasing their risk of violence or suicide. When one is woke and can see and feel the oppression everywhere, it becomes one's moral duty to call it all out, ban it and deplatform, punish and cancel the perpetrators. The rest of us are at best still asleep, or at worst willfully ignorant and refusing to wake up. The woke movement claims to be progressive, but its origins are more than half a century old and based on faulty and unproven scholarship. Surely we can find a better and more modern basis for understanding the social issues of our day.